Hey everybody, welcome to Neil Talks. My name's Neil and it's time to talk a little lost. This is a reaction I'm going to do to a featurette that I know nothing about, but a bunch of you has, have asked me to check it out. I believe it's kind of a, a making of slash reminiscing about the filming of films after the completion of the entire run. I don't know if this was included as a DVD extra on that uh, season six box set or whether it played somewhere else. Maybe it was even a TV special. I'm not entirely sure, but it's much longer than your typical DVD featurette. This is almost as long as a full episode of Lost and it's called Letting Go reflections of a six-year journey. So I don't know really what I'm in for, but enough of you have asked me to check this out that I figure I, I certainly should. I don't have anything else to say, but I'm sure I'll have my thoughts as we go and at the end, so stick around for those. And uh, let's jump into it, guys. This is Letting Go, Reflections of a Six-Year Journey. Okay, just a bunch of B-roll so far, no score. It immediately feels so different than what we'd be seeing if we were hearing Giacchino's music underneath it. One day I'll have to do that Lost tour on Oahu. It, it, it's almost number 42 on that chopper. It's 42. <laughs> Sorry, 42. <laughs> There's the Giacchino. This is a Hawaii inspired painting. And it's mainly, I think, about the colors. It's impossible to separate being in Hawaii and lost the experience. Who is we this? We were all on that island together. I'd have no it's idea. Like the is survivors. This... I have no idea and what any of the people behind the scenes look show like. In that environment, I think, informed all of our experiences and the, and the show. Is this Lindelof or Cuse? There's a place. Now this is what Josh Holloway and I would, would boat. We would come right out of this harbor, take off right out there and go deep sea fishing. And we're passing by the world famous Diamond Head Crater. That's a nice little hike for people who are uh, into beautiful views. Oh, and here we go, up into the crater. This is super cool. Wow. I feel like there's just, I, I feel like I'm a tour guide. 
If you look out of the left hand side of the helicopter, I spent nine days on Oahu once for work, and I got to do zero touristing. And as we fly over, we can see everybody. I was staying at Turtle Bay Resort and everything. I didn't even get into the ocean. I was working 18 hour days every day I was there. There's the stages. All right. We're here at uh, Diamond Head Studios in Oahu. Where's Lit the tram ride? Literally right behind Diamond Head. Diamond Head uh, is right up there. And uh, this is, this, this studio is where Hawaii Five-0 was originally filmed. And a few years ago, we took it over. And this is really the home base for production for Lost. Um, we didn't take it over from Hawaii Five-0. There was a bit of, a little bit of a lag. lag. There was yeah. many years of yeah. lag. Right. Yeah. So let's go look at a few sets, yeah. shall we? This is the first incarnation of the submarine. Henry Gale uh, landed on the island on a balloon, <laughs> and this is this before is Benjamin rig. Linus killed him and took his identity. That's yes, right, yeah. exactly. This is the original plane, which was sort of a strange hybrid of an L-1011 and a 767. I don't know, it doesn't really look very flight worthy, Gene. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I came down on the initial scout, um, and uh, I remember driving around in a van with JJ and sort of starting to get a sense of, at that point, it was still, you know, are we gonna shoot the show Lost in Hawaii? There's no way that the show would have been even half of, or a quarter, or Is that Jack Bender? If we didn't shoot it here, I used to. I, I worked with Jack for like three months, a decade um, ago. Sense that this island brings to the show. I might be completely wrong. I can't remember what the man looks like. I didn't work super closely with him since I was only a second AD. The thing I love about Kualoa is that it's the most dramatic scenery I think on the entire island. Is this the famous ranch? This is almost a signature location for Lost. Yeah. And we've shot over six seasons here, and there's even a little sign that I can see right now that's commemorating the fact that we shot here. <laughs> Planes and helicopters were always an issue. Aircraft. Just. Did you work here first season? When did you first see it? Yeah, it was first season. This is like one yeah, of your iconic. Where they played golf. Environments, isn't There's a it? few. I mean, my first big thing here was the golf course. Yeah. <laughs> we also then had to walk to the other side of the valley because then there was that long shot of me and Dominic trying to mess the guy up and shot <laughs> when I was doing my dance. Oh. My <laughs> iconic dance. One of your choicer moments. to the first and hopefully last island open. You are all in the body. You hear that song? That's some good grip in there. It's beautiful. Dolly lay a dolly track over uneven ground like that. Getting it perfectly level. After I read the Much appreciated by a dolly grip by scripts I've ever read. So I was really excited. I mean what it's turned into over the six years obviously is much much bigger than I could have ever imagined. I mean, the, the universe, the story itself. <laughs> Spinning up that engine. Oh. Mokalaia Beach is where we shot the majority of the pilot and season one and um so it evokes you know memories of the first season and what it meant to be on the show lost you know it really this this beach kind of defines that because it is so difficult the elements are right there and you're exposed completely but it's also so beautiful 
And there's a road right there that we never saw. <laughs> come out. He will see all this. It will be mayhem. And uh, he will come walk forward. He will look around. He sees Claire over here. He sees Boone there. So he's done with this. And as he runs over here, he goes to her, deals with her, tells, uh, finds her early. I came here to Hawaii. I actually booked, like, you know, an extra week so I could, you know, after after I worked the job, I could still have a little extra vacation time. Oh, so yeah. if anything, I got a vacation out of it. What did you think the prospects were for the show's success at that time? Well, um, I thought the they, pilot... They were putting huge like money a, into it. Like a long Twilight Zone episode. So I dug it, and I was scared of it because there was, like, a little bit of action sequence for me to do of the exploding plane wing, which kind of scared me. Actually, my first line got cut from the pilot. It's uh, when, when Jack yells, like, hey, in the opening, in the whole crash sequence, I turn to him and I go, plane crashed. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> and then just kind of like, just stunned <laughs> from the whole thing. This is the moment where you guys have all heard this crazy sound and you walk up to uh, get a look at what this thing might be. Uh, Behind the scenes of J.J. Abrams. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it is weird. <laughs> the ugly people didn't survive the crash. It's just the way it works out sometimes. Terror and depression are the two things that occurred to me when I heard that the show was actually going to go. I had worked in television for five years. I'd never experienced anything approaching, you know, this level of production. We've had a couple uh, minor hiccups, but... We're, uh, we're on track to make the greatest pilot ever, no doubt. One of the very early I'm assuming I'm just supposed to know who all these behind the scenes people the are because we're not getting any subtitles to that. Is that Carlton? Sawyer has to say, you know, I just shot a bear. And I was like, oh my God, no one's going to watch this show. This is just so bad. It's so bad. It's so cheesy. And then we go into the jungle and they're all completely committed to the reality of the show. And I was like, oh my God, if the actors are this good and they're completely committed to the reality of this show, it might be crazy enough to work. I mean, ABC believed in it enough to spend so much on it, right? So. And the second day I was running through the jungle in the pouring rain, screaming in terror, because there was a monster after me. That was my second day shooting on Lost, <laughs> which means it was my second day working as an actress in front of a camera. It was a really intense day, and I, I just remember being in the banyan tree and shaking uncontrollably. And out of the corner of my eye, as I'm counting down from five, I see JJ standing at the monitor, and he's literally going like this. At the monitor. <laughs> a lot of directors and are like that when they're so getting a good good performance. Was, was happening in that banyan tree helped me to sort of shake off some of my jitters and some of my nervousness about acting for the first time ever and um, just get into it and have fun. Yes. I think further down I see a moonbeam. Let us go see if we can't catch it. And this is where Maggie died. Look. <laughs> uh, no, it was this way, wasn't it? This okay. Was. Yeah, you're right. Okay. And then I was like, sort of like dri dribbling Zane, on her and, and crying on her. Don't forget the key to the. Where's Kate? <laughs> Where's Kate? Where's Kate? And that's really um, what happened. Damon was saying the show was about a sense of community, and we had that community in that first yeah. season because we literally came came to Hawaii. We didn't know anyone here. We hadn't made fr friends other than outside the cast, mm -hmm. and we were literally sort of shipwrecked, if you like, yeah. with each other. And we we did look out for each other. We were all thrust into a situation with people we we probably wouldn't have met otherwise, and. Mm. You know, we found incredible common ground. One day I will live in a jungle like this. 
Well, there was a real sense of excitement and, and innocence and life and Lost was our life for that time. For those six weeks, we lived and breathed the show. And that was, um, that was, I guess it created a sort of false reality that was really beautiful. It was six like week pilot? Again, you know, and yeah, how that makes Christy sense. You become intimate when you're, when you're locked into something together. When we first got here. That's, that's on the big side for a pilot, but with this budget, we I get it. Pretty much the only people we knew. So. We, you know, we'd hang out on the weekends. It was kind of like we really were stuck on an island with each other. Come on, so come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. It's something that's it's an intangible that you can't really put your finger on, but you know it when the magic is there. And it's, as soon as we met on the first night we all met, we were like, oh my God, this is like, what a cast. You know, everyone is such an individual and it's not a needy, feel from anyone and they're all talented actors now one of the things that struck me about loss was the colors i couldn't think of shooting this anywhere else than here i mean it's pretty breathtaking <laughs> it helps as an actor, and all of us could attest to it, to work in, a, in an environment where you can relax. And uh, I mean, it's kind of hard not to relax once you get off the plane and you smell this air and you look around you and you say, okay, this is, you know, I've arrived in paradise. And then you add to that a crew that is, you know, they work seamlessly together. They're so laid back. Everybody's, you know, in flip-flops and t-shirts. And you can't help but sort of smile and say, wow, this is, this is how every Flip flops you know, aren't you know, work so safe approved. Sort of energy and vibe <laughs> and sort of situation. It, we're we're it, just it, a few spokes in a big, big <laughs> wheel. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, the, every element of this is the reason it works. I was amazed at how good the crew was at working in these environments. Yeah. It was like they... God, it was a... It's like they'd taken a course or they had a handbook yeah. or something that this said... Is just, this is just how they do it. I've shot in a lot of wet forests. Not tropical ones, but... But you work in Vancouver, you work in the... badges in you, you work in the forest in a lot. Repellents. And it rains a lot. Balance. Yeah, that's the... Not that's falling the in the mud. The, the places we have to go, guys are carrying, you know, highly expensive cameras and stuff through creek beds and... That first July, that first July on Moklea Beach, shade was such a, you know, prized commodity. Yeah. It was so hot out there. There's nothing better than working in, in a natural environment that's exactly what your character would be dealing with. You know, doing scenes in the actual tropical island environment that these people were, would be dealing in, in the jungle, on the beach, in the water, in the rain. I had nothing but... Yeah, you, you, you can't fake it on a sound stage, that's for sure. Can we get the actors warmer, please? Yeah. It always makes your job a lot easier. Great. You know, it's been cold, really cold, uh, several times this past week because we're constantly being drenched with water. But um, feeling, feeling healthy, health, healthy, a little bit sore. <laughs> and cut. <laughs> Season two or three, I learned to surf, and um, learning to surf was what brought me my relationship with this island. And I realized there's a reason the locals get in the ocean all the time because it's so healing and it's so rejuvenating and it sort of fills you up with not joy or exuberance or exhilaration, but just peace, you know, just a calm and a peace. And um, I think that's really where the spirit of Aloha comes from. Yeah, I need to go back. Oh my. Wow, this is 
so beautiful. Is that all Oahu? Well, oh, man. The first season, we had a joke, which was another in rainbow. <laughs> I mean, how many places do you live where you literally wake up and swim under, or apparently under a rainbow? And uh, that was certainly true in Hawaii. When we launched the raft season one, we had, I think, four days or five days on the beach for that finale. And uh, I said to the guys, what day are we going to be able to launch the raft? And they said, the ocean will tell you. <laughs> that was very meaningful because you have to listen to the environment. Yeah. And Gene Higgins and the rest of us, we always had blessings. We always did our best to respect and honor the environment. Yeah, that was a pretty amazing moment. The rat sequence for me was one of the highlights of my entire experience on Lost. Uh, it was special because it was the culmination of a huge immersive emotional journey that the characters took, but also that the ar actors took. For us to have gone to the, to the end of our first season uh, was a real special time. So. That kind of breaking free of the island was, in a way, a nice parallel to what we were going through uh, as actors on the show. That's some whales coming up on the left side, two of them. Right on! Grays? Oh, right there. I see them. I know they get a bunch of gray whales in Hawaii. Could be. No, humpbacks. Humpbacks have insanely huge flippers. Let's look at what's on our stage here. In here? It's really bicycle. Yeah. yeah, we can go out here. Um, house lights on, yes, okay. So when Oceanic 815 lands in LAX, that was, we shot that here. We shot that here on this right. stage. Cool. The first set on this stage was season two hatch where Desmond kept pushing the button. The swan and hatch, that the swan, yeah. hatch swan hatch, right. Took almost the entire stage. And we had yeah. probably a big more set. conversations about the construction of that set than any set before or since. Because we knew we were going to spend an entire season there. I know. That's right. yeah. But my favorite part of that whole set was the magically expanding armory. Oh, oh right. Yes. Which started out as a very small closet that you just walked in with a rack of guns. And by the time we finished, we were having entire scenes. There was an L. People were sleeping there. People were held captive to there. We had told you when you were originally designing it, around episode 13 or 14, they're going to catch an other. And basically, we're going to start yeah. spending 20 to 30 minutes in every episode inside <laughs> that set. You might have, might have designed the armory a little bit larger. But you know but what? You, you know what you know. I'm assuming she's the production designer then. One memory that I that'll always stay with me was when we first started talking about what's in the hatch. Damon and I were going over to see Steve McPherson, the, the president of ABC, and we were gonna pitch him what was in the hatch. We were like I wonder if we can get like, you know, jobs as like coffee baristas. I mean, that might be what we're gonna be doing in about like 24 hours. And, uh, but to his credit, Steve listened to the idea and he embraced it, he thought it was cool. And that was really, the, that was a really a big turning point. At that point, when we started talking about what's in the hatch, the show opened up for me in a way that it never had before. All these conversations started making me finally realize for the first time, oh my God, Lost might actually be a series. You started season two? Middle of, middle of season two, episode yeah. 214. In a net. A at at the end of season two, I had only had scenes with three or four people. Yeah, you were just in that room and... Yeah, I was always in that room. I guess our first lines might have been, um, your friends are staying with us. 
at the end when we're all on that pier. Oh, yeah, on the pier, when we put the bags over your head. Sure. That's right, I remember that now. Oh, here he is, I thought to myself. <laughs> Good morning. I'm Michael Emerson. I play the role of not Henry Gale. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about you being here for five seasons. And I was like, wow, not bad for the new guy. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the show got faster pace. And, and I like that they put number one and number two, to, the new number one and the new number two together that change, for this reminiscing. I, I thought it was exciting. Oh, yeah, you said someone once came up to you, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's my, my crazy fan story that I trot out all the time about the lady from New Zealand that crossed the street twice in one week <laughs> in Waikiki to tell me that since I'd come on, they'd stop watching. <laughs> Just not the same anymore. <laughs> All the way back in the gap between season two and three, I think we said things like, the show is going to start to move out of question mode and into answer mode. There were still questions, but, um, you so know, had that's to kind of the nature. Build Hydra Station, but I understand that that Dharma village. You well, something existing, okay. right? I'll be the dental in distress. Okay. <sighs> and then, shh. Uh, uh. I'm afraid of a metaphor. It's something greater than myself. Uh, uh. <laughs> Smoke monster. Uh. <laughs> that was good. Uh. Right from the get-go, I said to Damon, all right, the rule here is gonna be if you and I think it's cool, it goes in the show. And we kind of okay. tossed out the window all of these traditional rules about television. No, that makes me sound like that's Carlton. We employ time travel. Yeah, I'm rethinking the whole Jack People Bender thing. This. They might think this is way too genre, but the audience accepted that. By that point, they okay. had invested in the characters and in the show, and they were willing to go with that. I could have really used some subtitles here. And Carlton, <laughs> all those guys that have conceived the show and been sort of, you know, been obviously instrumental in what the show has become and what the whole lost universe became and 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 never ever doubted that it wasn't gonna that it wasn't gonna pay off in some really cool way. Yeah, we talked about this before and with Emily too about how you know, we we're not always we don't have all the facts necessarily, haven't always had that, but that's sort of been part of the joy of, you know, sort of discovering a scene. You can't ask for a better exercise as an actor than sort of learning what you it's were taught. It's true, it's a challenge for you to really write one. I think it's gonna be strange going into other jobs when uh, someone will say, well, would you like me to explain what's going on? And we'll be, we'll be, <laughs> don't tell no, me. No, 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 don't, don't tell us what we should be doing. I didn't read the script. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone gets a new life on this island while I'm here. This is what I'm supposed to do. Let's just see about some islands here. Some fish might be kind of cool. Well, I think even I grew up on the show. Um, I think I'm a better person for in, in every way. I think I'm a better artist. Um, I'm a better director, I'm a better producer. I think, um, I think all of us um, grew up a lot on the show. You know, before Lost, I had very rarely stayed in one place for more than six months and very rarely spent much more than that much time with anyone. So she was a runner. Whoever. And um, so without being on the run, you know, I was definitely moving a lot. <laughs> and this forced me to stay still, and it forced me to connect on a level that I don't know if I've ever connected before. And I think that happened a lot on our show over the six years. The changes we all went through as individuals were reflected in our characters and vice versa. But if I put an arm around to kind of help steady... No, he just has to man up. All right. <laughs> Damn you! <laughs> I've learned so much from the show. It was, I mean, it, this show raised me. I came a girl and I've come back a woman. Actually, facetious but somewhat true. Um, <laughs> it was a really incredible experience. And I, I was a 34-year-old man. I'm now a 41-year-old woman. 
I, I did think um, the idea of being a lottery winner in many ways was applicable to my situation. Yeah, both your your real self and your fictional. Yeah. The show got me into, you know, a different tax bracket. <laughs> and uh, you know, it was it was pretty much yeah, it was it was a jackpot job to get. I've had a great time in Hawaii. My kids have had an incredible opportunity. My little boy was two years old when we came over here. He's eight. Most of his conscious life has been in Hawaii, so I felt blessed every day that I woke up and I was like, man, I'm, I'm making a living, I've got a gig, and I'm living in Hawaii. Doesn't get much better than that. What is this place? This is the reason we're here. This is how you get to the, the heart of the this island. Is this is, this is sort of like one of the capillaries. While we created this fictional world of the show, we also created a real family that was that were the people who made the show. People have gotten married, had kids, you know, have you know made friendships. I mean, the, the kind of incredible bonds of all the people working on the show. And as as the show is ending and everyone is sort of getting ready to go their separate ways, it's been very uh, poignant and and. Uh, and, and really, really emotional. Carlton, why did you kill this family? <laughs> why did you, why end the show? Uh, well, I think okay. it, would have, it would have died. Had so that is Carlton. Oh, show. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think evolution is part of it. It got real exciting, I think, when they announced the ending. Yeah. We could tell, you, could, you saw it in the writing that it's like, now we know when it's gonna end. It was the best thing that happened. And you could just feel this change. And that was like things. late season things three? Got much more urgent. Yeah, it was good. Now it's just sort of bittersweet feeling of, wow, we're, we're going out, we're going out on a high, everybody's really excited, it's been a great season, but that's it. You know, and I know we'll, you know, my bunches will keep in touch, and, but actually all being together here, it's just not, it's not going to happen again, so, yeah. So, don't make me cry. <laughs> How you doing there, bud? Hey, I'll get us off. I got us <laughs> off the island. I'll get us back on. You've been steering this boat. I'm really. Really? Do you know where okay. we're going? Yeah. Are you really doing it? I didn't hear what she doing. I thought you, you just look for here. <laughs> Guys. Right there. Yeah, that looks wow, right. All the tents are gone. Maybe they just haven't been built yet. I only feel happiness and gratefulness and joy that I was a part of this experience. It's going to take a while to, to, to get the whole experience, not just um, the experience of uh, playing Saeed, but the whole life experience of doing this job. We have to go back to the real world. Oh, no. I mean, I had to already, but yeah, you, you have you, to now. You did it, and you have to readjust. to Dominic Monaghan and uh, he was kind of saying that you're going to need to have like this moment where you kind of put this job to bed in a way you know and then on to the next adventure I feel really completed in the in the Ben story it's just I suppose it's just right for better or for worse, I kind of feel like now I could do anything I want with the rest of my life and not worry about it, no matter how simple or how trivial or how mundane. 
action. I have put so much focus and attention towards that guy's life and his journey for six years now that now that he's gone and uh, that story is over, you know, there's definitely a feeling of letting something go and kind of leaves you a little bit wandering around. Letting go. Oh, it just feels like I'm in heaven. <laughs> I feel like I kind of did something really great, and I kind of made a mark somehow. I've had a really exciting journey, and, and I've been a part of something that hopefully and probably will go down as something special. And that's a really amazing gift. Not too many people can say that they've been given that kind of gift at 30 years old. You, you can't really separate the experience of playing Jack Shepard and the experience of being in Hawaii for six years and working with the people that I worked with, and that's all of life changes you to some degree. In, in a lot of respects, we are just our memories. Like everything, you got to know when to stop. And I think maybe this is a good time to stop this because if I keep doing it, I'll just overpaint it. And it's kind of alive and well right now. And whether it ends up this or something else, it's got a certain life that I like. We started in the bamboo forest. Or are we about to end in the bamboo forest? intelligent show, one that took risks. The fact that we could actually set the mark high and that the audience liked that, that the audience appreciated that the show was challenging, you know, that to me is something that I will always be incredibly proud of. Action. I'm most proud of the fact that after six seasons and, you know, more than 120 episodes of the show, people still cared about it when it ended. I'm thinking when we were here six years ago and we first kind of dropped down into his face and uh, thinking that uh, the, the show was never gonna get picked up in a million years. Here we are. sound right now I'm in that stage of just being incredibly excited I just wrapped a few minutes ago my last shot and or 20 minutes ago and so I'm still just sort of in that feeling of God I can't believe we did this Terry O'Quinn uh -huh. and Jorge Garcia geniuses both Thank you so much. For 
us, it was something that was completely monumental, and it was about um, life changes and realizing things about ourselves and um, falling in love with new people and, and new friendships and new places. And there's something so beautiful that happened here that you can't just leave, and, and that's that. You know, we're taking something with us. Yeah, there's something about working in film and television that it, it bonds you to your co-workers incredibly strongly and quickly. I've done little independent movies that were said and done in six weeks of filming. And, and you leave at the end of it with friends for life. The closest experience I personally have to a Lost is the three and a half seasons I spent on Arrow. And it, it's a family that I'll always have. That that crew. Yeah, they just they just mean so much to you. You you, you we spent ten months a year working fourteen hour days in high stress environments, often out in the elements, often through the night. Adversity generates these bonds it does something special and i don't mean a negative work environment but i do mean the pressures of a high stakes work environment where you are spending a whole lot of the network's money making a show that has to be delivered on time you've got a tight production schedule everything needs to happen planned out in advance but then the execution on the day there's a there's a there's a a crazed energy to the production of it all, whether you're wearing flip-flops or not. There's an AD, an assistant director behind the scenes, watching his, checking his watch every every five minutes, seeing if they're on schedule for the day, every day. And um, yeah, I, I I totally get what everyone was saying there. You know, when when that show comes to an end, there's a hole in your life because the show has been your life in a very real sense when when you're filming you you have no time for you, you spend no time with your family your weekends are basically used to recover when i was on arrow for instance we would often finish each week with what's called a fratter day which means you start filming on friday and you finish filming on saturday um often if we ever had a night shoot, we'd schedule them for Friday nights because we'd finish on Saturday morning. So often I was driving home from work at the end of a work week, Saturday morning, sunrise in my eyes, I'd go home, I'd fall asleep, and I had 48 hours before I needed to be back at work bright and early Monday morning. And it does bad things to your body clock, it does bad things to your physical health, it's high stress, um, but you make incredible friends and incredible lasting memories and hopefully you're working on a show that you're proud of a, a show that resonates a show that has fans and there's something incredibly cool about working on something that has fans arrow we didn't have a huge fan base but man did we have a dedicated fan base we knew that the same two million people were watching every week and they were eating up what we were doing they were loving it and then there was something pretty cool about that um, that inspires you and makes you dig deep and find that extra reserve and and do things that maybe you wouldn't normally think you were capable of so yeah it's a it's a really cool work environment but i'll kind of echo some of the sentiments that were said in this in this featurette there is a there is a gap in your life and 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 it may be it's not something that you can do your entire life maybe it's something that you have to pick your moment to step away from 
which is what I've done. I, I spent 20 years in the business. I climbed my, I climbed the ladder to the top of my department. I took a look around once I got to the top and I had the prospect of doing that for another 20 years of my life and I could not envision it. I, I, I could not envision it. And it was time for me to walk away. Time for me to find something new. Time for me to explore new avenues. Do I treasure my time in the film and television industry? Absolutely. It meant so much to me. It turned me into the person I am today. It taught me so much about the business, about myself, about story. I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing right now if it weren't for all the time I spent making film and TV over the years in any capacity. And, and now I'm capable of pursuing new adventures. And that, that's, that's really cool. At heart, I'm also a traveler. And I watch a video like this and I see all these incredible spots and it just ignites that fire in me to go to Hawaii again. I, like I said, I've only ever been once and it was for work and I barely got to see any of it. You know, they plunked us down in this gorgeous resort on the north, north shore of Oahu and there were beautiful waves and gorgeous beaches and, and the view from my, my hotel room was wonderful. But I was working 18 hour days for the, the eight days I was there and I came, I worked, I left and I never really got to explore. I never really got to, like I say, be a tourist. And, um, you know, that's a regret, but, but one day I'll go back and maybe I'll be doing the Lost Tour and seeing some of the spots that they filmed and meeting other Losties and who knows, maybe there'll be a Lost, another Lost convention one of these days. I know the, the plans for the last one fell through because of the COVID of it all and there are no plans for another one, but time will tell. And yeah, man, this 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 is a great way to a, a great sort of a look back. It feels very familiar, even though it's a show I never got to work on. Though those feelings are familiar, looking at you know the, those bits of set that are still kicking around. Here's the soundstage. It's all rather mundane, but it all speaks to how the show got made. And I, I like that the crew got a little bit of a nod there because. They're the ones that really do bust their ass uh, every day. If you're an actor, even if even if you're a, a Matthew Fox, you're probably not working every day. You, you know, you may have the odd episode where you work every day, but most of the time you'll get the odd day off in the course of the shooting schedule. The crew don't get those. The crew are working from from call to wrap every single day. Yeah, they're, they're the heroes of any production. I'm not taking anything away from the cast, but, but the crew deserve all the kudos and credit in the world. And my hat's off to the crew of Lost because they've got something they can, they can point at and say, I helped make that. And, and be incredibly proud of what that show is and represents and how good it was and how many amazing fans it has and its staying power. Yeah. That, that, that crew can wear that as a badge of pride and honor for the rest of their careers. So, my hat's off to them. I, I wish, you know, in a weird way, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of happy I don't, I, I wasn't immediately able to put names to faces of those behind the scenes. I, I, I recognize J.J. Abrams, obviously, but Lindelof and Hughes and some of the other faces, like, I could start figuring it out, but the fact that there weren't um, Chiron's telling me who they were, while annoying, I guess it made it a pure viewing experience. And, and, I, and I like that I, I'm still learning about the show and learning the behind the scenes of it all. There's going to be a lot more for me to discover about this show. I, I think that's what it tells me most of anything. Anyway, thank you guys so much for hanging out. This has been, this was a really fun um, look back. Yeah, keep an eye out for future lost content. There will be more in the pipeline as down the road. And uh, until the next time, everybody, take care, stay healthy. We'll see you soon. Cheers.